Are we finally entering a new era of journey mapping? Why are organizations transitioning to journey management? And how can you benefit from this? Stick around for all the answers. Here's the guest for this episode. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Jochem, and this is the Service Design Show episode 167. Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome back to the Service Design Show. On this show, we explore what's beneath the surface of service design. What are the hidden and invisible things that make the difference between success and failure, all to help you design great services that have a positive impact on people, business, and of course, our planet. Our guest in this episode is Jochem van der Veer. Jochem is the CEO of Daydo. Daydo is a unique online platform that helps companies to manage and organize around journeys at an enterprise scale. Recently, I got the opportunity to have lunch with Jochem, and what emerged from that lunch was a partnership between Daydo and the Service Design Show, something that I'm extremely excited about. Not only because this support from Daydo is going to help me keep on creating more and better content for you this year, but also because we're going to launch a few initiatives together for you. And one of them is going to already be announced in this episode. So ever since the start of the Serbs Design Show, we've talked about journey maps and journey mapping extensively. Every service design professional knows that a journey map is not a deliverable. It's a means to an end. That's literally the thing we talked about on the very first episode. Well, the reality is that this was way easier said than done. For a very long time, it proved to be very challenging to turn journey maps into practical business tools that could be used for decision making. Too often, you'd create a journey map that didn't survive beyond a single project. But today we are starting to see the signs of a new area emerge. Journey maps are spreading far and wide in organizations. The demand to understand the journey is growing from top management and we are connecting more and more parts of the business to the journey. That's a great success and something that we only could hope for just a few years ago. So now the journey maps are starting to pop up everywhere throughout organizations. A new set of challenges is emerging. How do you connect all these journeys? How do you find the most important improvement and innovation opportunities? And how do you help everyone inside the organization to work with them effectively? Like I said, Daydo provides a platform that helps organizations to put journeys at the heart of their operation at an enterprise scale, which means that Jochem and his team see organizations make this transition from journey mapping to journey management from close up. This gives them a unique perspective on what's needed to make this a success and what the pitfalls are when you try to make this leap in maturity. So I invited Jochem on the show to share some of his most important insights with us. And that's what's coming up in this conversation. But that's not all, because in this episode, we're also going to announce the launch of the Journey Management Index, a simple tool that is going to help you understand where and how you can improve your journey management capabilities and also benchmark yourself against your competitors and your colleagues. You can find the link to the journey management index in the show notes of this episode, but I really encourage you to first listen to the conversation with Jochem for some useful context. As you've heard, a lot is coming up in this conversation, so make sure you sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation with Jochem van der Veer. Welcome to the show, Jochem. Hi, Mark. Hey, good to see you here on the show. Good to have you on. Uh, we've been in touch for quite a while, but it never got to this conversation. And now there are some special, uh, uh, what is it, occasions to uh, have this chat. Um, but before we dive into that, Jochem, um, could you give a brief introduction of what your day looks like these days? Who are you? What do you do? What? And I wanted to say, why are you here? But let's not talk about that yet. Who are you and what do you do? <laughs> 
So today I am the CEO at Datu, or a journey management solution. I'm going to talk about that at length. Um, but I've been like transforming businesses from the inside as a service designer, first as a background in, in UX design, but later as a service designer, helping them to basically work customer-centric across teams and instill a culture of human-centered design, or at least user-centered design in a company. Um, I have two kids. My wife is expecting the third in a few weeks, or we are. So uh, besides working hard, I'm having a ton of fun at my home where there's a full house coming. Mm, yeah, they are the business called family. <laughs> the business called family. Yeah, yeah. But my wife is running that as a CEO, so we have mm. clear uh, <laughs> splits between us. <laughs> nice. And you're one of the few guests. I think I... Um, it's it's maybe a list of 10 that I've actually met and have been able to have uh, a lunch or a dinner with. So this is also a special occasion. Jochem, uh, we do have like uh, a special lightning round, five questions for you as well to get to know Jochem as a person next to Jochem as a professional. Just the first thing that comes to your mind, brief answers, quick answers. Uh, let's see what comes out. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's go. Jochem, what was your first job? Ooh, it was a paper boy when I was 14 uh, or paper. It was like uh, those ad magazines in the, in the streets. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you could be an animal, which animal would you like to be? Ooh, that's a tricky one. I think I'll go for giraffe having overview. <laughs> nice. Uh, <laughs> if you could work from anywhere in the world, what place would you pick? It's also a tricky one. Building a remote company, I always thought, I'll be anywhere and work from anywhere. And I have been working in many places, uh, but right now I'm sitting in the back garden and I really enjoy it. So I think I'll stay here. Mm, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's not elaborate on that. Uh, if you could recommend a one a book to someone, which book would you recommend? Good strategy, bad strategy. I yeah. think you listeners are familiar with it. Can drop I, it in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good book. Yeah, I'll, I'll, Recommend I can it. talk about it, but that's the one. Yes. Mm, yes. Good strategy, bad strategy. Uh, I uh, I see the cover title and the cover Rid right in Riddler, front of me. Riddler, Riddler is the, is the writer. I'm not I'm probably black, and, names, black but... and white book. I think it was recommended also in, uh, I don't know, uh, Leon Hovenation episode 110, 11, something like that. Ooh. Anywho, mm -hmm. um, Johan, final question, traditional question. Uh, do you recall the first moment you learned about service design? Yeah, I was actually uh, working as a UX designer and someone said, you're not a UX designer, you are a service designer. And I was like, eh, hang on a minute. And turned out I was designing this project, but it took the whole service of the whole customer experience into perspective, which was logical to me. But then people slapped a label on it and I started digging. So it was about eight years ago, I think it was, uh, doing the work at a large corporate as an external designer. So that was when I discovered it. When you entered the rabbit hole <laughs> and you never exactly. get out. <laughs> I don't no, know. I'm still discovering it. Yeah, I it's guess. like Hotel California of service design. Like you can enter, but you'll never leave. Uh, all right. right. Thanks for uh, adding this context. Now you already mentioned something about Datu. You already mentioned something about journey management. Um, but uh, we have to sort of also mention that the fact that your uh, partner this year of the service design show, which is I'm super excited about, uh, and uh, I think uh, this gives us an opportunity to do a lot of fun things. It's not the only reason why you're on the show now that uh, you've partnered with us, but it's definitely, um, uh, for me, it's an, uh, it's an interesting thing because you have such a, a relevant topic as they do, as Jochem. I know how you've been thinking recently, so I thought this would be a good kickoff of our partnership. And uh, it's not going only to be about this episode. We're going to continue working together throughout the entire year, helping people, not just in this episode, but in, in many more. So um, yeah, this partnership, uh, let's let's briefly talk about that because I'm also curious from your perspective, I know why I'm excited about this, but uh, why did you think it was a good idea to join up forces with the Service Design Show? So I will answer it in, in two parts because the rabbit hole you mentioned is like, when you start digging in like how the role of service design is changing and how we as service designers are actually used or propelled forward to change the face of business these days. Um, we as data also started to look into like who is actually benefiting from journey management, 
we'll define it in a second. But then we saw like the server design community was big. And then when you flip it around and think like, who is actually driving this? Who are the most important people there? And we were always inspired by you. And I was personally like following you for years and figuring out like, hey, what is he saying? What are we doing? Where is this field going? So now that we have a chance to collaborate and, and take this one step further, I, I'm very excited about this, but also uh, flattered to be in your show and be talking about this. So that is, that is one thing um, that I'm uh, wanted to share with you. And the other part is that the shift is happening from we as a group of service designers are doing service design, much like where we as UX designers were like, a decade, 15 years ago, seen as like, oh, they are doing the, the nice imagery on the website and they're making stuff nice and beautiful. No, we're an integral part of the organization. We represent the customer, but we also, as service designers, take into account the business aspects of the problems we try to solve, having the holistic view. So making sure that this is gonna be a sustainable motion in the business propelled by our customer journeys, but by making sure business design is actually the way we're going to move forward. Um, yeah, it's fantastic to be part of that and, and help people to create impact because that's ultimately what we all want to do for the customer, for the business, for ourselves. So yeah, I'm very excited to be partnering with you on this trajectory. Awesome, yeah. Uh, I want to see where we are at the end of the year. Uh, we have some ambitious plans to help this community. Um, uh, one thing uh, you mentioned and uh, a phrase that stuck with me is helping people to go from journey mapping to journey management. Uh, we're also launching the journey management index, more about that in a, in a second. But uh, now that we've mentioned journey management a dozen times already without giving a proper definition, let's talk a little bit about that. What's journey management? So it's a, it's a management philosophy. It's a way of doing things. Let me start there. And there's many flavors to it. If I had to define it, it is about putting the customer's journey in the center of Drive the your business and organizing around it. Now to do that, you need to have proper research practices. You need to be able to plan it out. You need to be able to design these journeys. You need to be able to measure them, optimize them, use them to influence decision-making and basically rally the troops around the customer journey. And because we know that there's not just one journey, like an end-to-end -end journey. There's, in, in most organizations, many journeys, dozens, if not hundreds, to manage. And to do that at scale, we just can't just visualize our journeys and say, like, this is it. Here's the to-be version we want to be at, and then magically have change happen. We need to be meticulous about managing every step of all these journeys. Like, how are we finding the opportunities for growth, for innovation, for us to say, this is what we're going to do next and know exactly why, because it's rooted in the customer experience. So businesses are now adopting this new management philosophy, putting the journey first and organizing around it. And I think that is what we mean with the term journey management, is being able to work as one, impacting the customer experience, by putting the customer journey front and center. Mm. Now, um, I'm sure you've explained the story quite often. And um, when you get a response where people are confused between, well, isn't like, what's the difference between journey mapping, journey management, how, you quickly, how do you quickly define that? So journey maps, journey mapping is a, is a process or a tool, if you will, that has been around for three decades almost. And it is common, people know of it, people, know how to do it, there's practices around it, but the end result is a map, which clearly is not the territory. It's just a map of like, hey, this is what customers go through, this is what they experience. Perhaps you go a step further, turn it into a blueprint where you say like, this is how we are organized to make this journey a reality. Here's the opportunities that we have identified. But the map is not the goal. The map is just a tool to get people to make progress towards impacting the customer experience, toward making their business be relevant, stay relevant, be competitive or outpace the competition. So journeys are essential in journey management, but they are not the goal. So you need your journeys, you need to understand them, you need to research them and design them so you have an understanding of how they are. But then you need to take a process from, let's say, insight in those journeys to implementing new solutions and be able to do that across teams. And that is where the management aspect comes in. Mm. 
I'm, um, I usually think in metaphors, my head just somehow works that way in, in analogies. And uh, what I'm seeing here, if I take it to the product uh, space and uh, transitioning away from services and journeys, like um, our map would be a, a blueprint of a product or of a building, maybe architecture. Let's say architecture. We have a, a visualization uh, or a construction drawing of uh, a building. Um, that's the journey map. That's the visualization. But then in order to actually get that building into the world, you need, I don't know, engineers, construction workers, logistics, HR, um, finance, um, right? And, and is, is, is that, does, is that a valid analogy? Where does it break? Yeah, I think, I think so too. I, I think it is. Um, but then we have to acknowledge that construction as a, as a field, as a practice, um, is constantly evolving, but there are rituals. There is a way of doing things. There are skyscrapers we've built and the principles are the same for all these skyscrapers. So if we're going to build a new building, sure, you're going to start with the blueprint. You need all these people to be able to work, to make it happen. But in the world, we already agreed to like, this is the way we build skyscrapers. So. In the business world, we haven't agreed to like, this is the way we manage the customer experience. People are working in their projects. People are working in their product environment. They're chasing vanity metrics. They have their KPIs. They have the blinders on. Uh, we have not agreed as on a company level or maybe as a, as a business level say like, this is the way you manage customer experience. You put the journey first and then you organize around it. And I think that is where the analogy is good and also shows where today's business priorities might break down when you put the journey first. Could it be that uh, the journey, I wanted to say it's a blueprint for the how the organization should be modeled, but that's not it. It's the organization is modeled in order to facilitate something. So uh, no, that doesn't, uh, uh, that doesn't really work. Uh, so you, in our conversations prior to this, you mentioned a few times there is something like a journey management stack. And that got me curious. Like I have a software engineering background. I like the word stack. Um, can you elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, tech refers to the tech stack, right? So how do you make stuff happen from the lowest level all the way to like your maybe your code base or your, your um, event-driven architecture all the way to the actual customer experience? and the tools you use to actually make that happen. Um, journey management can be also expressed in like a tech stack. So you need that base layer, that visual layer that everyone in your organization is able to use. And, and with everyone, I mean the change part of the organization. Make no mistake, I think like people working in, let's say taking the train tickets in trains, are they useful? in working in journeys when we are talking to the service design community? I don't know, not really. But the change organization, they all need to have the same reality, the same understanding of what those journeys are. And then you want to measure these journeys, your data, and you want to make sure that your project management software, your product management software also is connected to these journeys. And the data you track, the events you get back, the measurements you do, the surveys you analyze also get stored in different systems. And these inputs, these data need to flow back into the journeys where they are actually having the context to understand what it means. So that is maybe a little bit more conceptual what I mean with the tech stack, but putting the journey in requires us to have the right tools in place to be able to manage them. Yeah, and it's like, I would say it's almost like the the dream that we've maybe already been talking about for a decade, but uh, somehow um, people first had to get used to the idea of journeys, journey mapping, journey maps, uh, get excited about it. It became sort of the poster child of the service design community for good or uh, and for bad. Uh, and now we're sort of seeing, okay, what else do we need to actually move beyond the visual image. And uh, again, I think this conversation has been going on for a decade, but now we're sort of slowly but surely starting also once to get the tools to the organization, building an appetite uh, to actually do this. One of the questions I had here on my notes is what problem does journey management solve? How would you describe that? The simplest definition would be solve cross-functional alignment or decision-making. 
Because I mean, there's no shortage of frameworks to make good decisions, to prioritize. But agreeing on what is right on a systemic level for a business, that's really hard. If you also want to make sure that your customer agrees, right? If it's just internal to the business, I mean, Agile as a way of working, as a philosophy with all its rituals and its processes and its, and its um, organization, all roles and people finding um, their places in the system, that work really, really well. But we forgot about the customer's perspective. So how do you map that on to something that we all want to do, but it's very hard to get to? And I think that is where it is starting to break down or becoming interesting to see where, where it can lead next. For us, it makes a lot of sense to organize around the journey, right? Uh, we've been preaching this for many years, like I said. Uh, if, it's, if it's that clear, what do you feel like... What do you feel is stopping organizations from adopting this sooner? And uh, everybody has their, their own uh, pet uh, management philosophy. They're like, okay, we're a product-centric company. You you lead... Uh, uh, now, I'm curious how you talk about data. Is it a service company or is it a product company? Like, um, I, Well, yeah, I'll, well, I'll give you yeah. a brain cracker. We're, we're a product company. I mean, we're a digital product, a platform, if you will, right? You can build on it, you can use it, and then without our help, you can set it up. So we're a digital product in the SaaS space, which is software as a service. <laughs> That's where it gets ambiguous, right? So, But anyway, I, I would say we're a product company. But the way that I've seen now companies adopt this is that traditional enterprise that have a huge service component to delivering their value to customers uh, are easily adopting it. But also leading cloud 100 product companies, they also need better tools for internal alignment to put the customer in the center. And it's not like enough to put the customer inside in the center. So like we have a big insight, now we're gonna rally the troops and we're gonna build something that solves that or addresses it. It is about maintaining that and maintaining that alignment across teams, having rituals around how do we make decisions on what is important for the customer and the business. And if there's nothing that unifies the two, it will still be like, or it's too product focus, or it's too business focus, or it's too customer focus, and therefore it's almost like charity. So product companies, traditional, legacy enterprise, service enterprise, everyone is actually looking into the same problem, which is like, how do we put the journey in the middle? organize around it, whether you're a product company or a service business, it's, it's less relevant. It's all about the customer experience. And I think that is the, the, the hard part as well. You need to do some hard work to recreate reality, to understand how these journeys are actually reflecting the things people do and feel about engaging with your brand or company and all these different levels. So you don't need to have like all these hundreds of journeys mapped out <laughs> right before you start. You can start with a few. And that is the smart move I see companies take, like start with a few where there's influence, where there's momentum, and then build it out. Um, but you need to do some legwork up front to get it right. You can't just say, this is a journey and this is how it's run. You need to talk to customers, research them, bring all the insights and the data together to get an understanding. Like if you start out small, and uh, I can totally see how that is a viable strategy, um, you're trying to work journey-centered, customer experience-centered in an organization that is still uh, built on a different, uh, in, in a, to work in a different way. Like, doesn't that break down? So far, I haven't seen it break down, but it is definitely breaking walls, right? It is making possible things that worked before. Um, but you need to have some business case. You need to have some initial results and you better get them fast because again, service designers, for us, it's a no brainer to work journey first or to, to work journey led even. To the rest of the organization, it's like, hmm, but how and does it even work? And is it actually driving more revenue or how does it you know, make the bottom line be, uh, be better? I mean, those are the things that you can solve. So take a few projects and actually show how you impact the customer experience what it did for the customer, how it drove revenue or how it reduced friction in whatever experience you're delivering and also show how you can do it effect effectively, together, faster. I mean, in most organizations, there are projects, three different projects that try to do the same thing where teams didn't even know that they were trying to do the same thing. 
So if you can remove that, you're going to have one of those projects and the other two teams can do other things like visualizing that is already impactful. So there's many ways to do this, but you do need to show that value to people who don't believe in it at face value. And that that is uh, uh, one of the big challenges. We talk a lot about that uh, uh, on the show here and it's an ongoing conversation. And luckily we sort of have the momentum, I think, as a community and more people are willing to uh, take uh, take a take a gamble or take up a uh, take our word for it initially, and uh, that's that's a good sign. Um, now, <clears throat> one of the other things uh, that got me really excited to uh, work with you guys is and girls probably I hope so, <laughs> not just a guy yes. from here. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Is um, you have a perspective on um, maturity and. Um, journey management maturity or journey maturity or i think you call it customer excellence maturity uh different levels that help uh, organizations and people practitioners think through where they are and uh, how they can improve i think that's one of the things currently sort of lacking and really it's it's very opaque like yeah i'm doing journey mapping and what's next uh so that got me excited to talk to you, and we're uh, using uh, sort of your definitions of uh, maturity to uh, drive the journey management index that we're going to uh, launch after this episode. But let's talk about those um, maturity levels, because one, how did you get to them? And two, uh, what are they? So we are still in the process of refining how it's actually playing out in organizations. So this is based on the work we've done as first service designers, helping these companies transform from the inside. And now we're even productizing it with the journey management index. So we as service designers also have another tool to say, if we want to be journey led and we call it journey excellence, right? That basically means like everything we do as a company is organized around the journey how we measure, how we plan, how we align, how we work, how we basically create anything of value. So that is journey excellence. And I would even say we as Daydu are not even there, even though we know exactly how it should be run. It's really, really hard to get it right. So that is like the the mature organizations. They have mastered journey management. Now, and at the other end of the spectrum, and that's where a lot of organizations came from, but I don't see that many of them anymore. It's like everything is intuition driven. There's like journeys all over the place or not even mentions of journeys, but it's like, oh yeah, maybe we make a customer journey for this project. Or maybe someone has a hunch and gut feel is talking about a journey. So that is like the other end. But going from like this intuition driven environment to starting to bring pockets of the organization in line with each other. So what we see is the fragmented landscape of, hey, some teams are using journeys as the reference point, other teams are not. But once these teams start to coordinate, the journey is the level at which they do this. And that's when we see coordination emerge. And usually, I mean, we're a product company, we're a platform. If you don't have any need for journey management or you're not maturing into this kind of new dimension of business, There is no reason to find a a tool. There's no reason to find a service designer to help you get there. But once this connection is starting to happen, that's like the middle of those three layers, people start to connect the dots. And that's where there's a need for, hey, if we're going to scale this up, everything needs to be uh, journey-led and things need to be named in the same way, need to be connected in the same way, need to be aligned in the same way. And that's actually the step between like level three and level four, where we really see this like scale takeoff, where all teams are starting to work in the same way, where standardized processes are embedded and decision-making is done in the same way across these journeys. Um, And that is where we have seen some companies actually are already in their end-to-end customer experience management, having this mature organization that supports these journeys from insight to implementation or supports teams to work in the same way. And that's a really cool thing to see. So it's really based on research and experience. And now we're codifying the things we learn. So others can say, if you're at step three or level three as an organization, how do you progress? What are the things you need to invest in? What goes really well? Okay, those you don't need to invest in, like maybe there's good tools and processes, but your culture is not there. And then you know exactly what to do next to understand how to 
get to the next level of maturity. So on an organizational level, I'm talking about. I don't know if this was useful. I mean, we're going to share like how these levels work in, in detail, I guess, over time. But the five levels, again, from intuition to fragmentation, going to be coordinated all the way to getting that skill in the organization and then ultimately leading up to journey excellence is what we're talking about. We're doing this as a video, but also as audio, so we can't show the actual uh, model, but uh, it's going to be available on uh, the Journey Management Index, and it's also available on, uh, on your website, so I'll make sure to uh, add all the links there. What I find interesting and uh, what, I, what gets me excited about uh, maturity models in general is that they give you stepping stones, so they help right. you to see how you can progress and get better without having to make a giant leap from being nowhere to being like the at the ultimate stage and what you're describing are very logical steps easy well easy to understand i wouldn't say easy to implement maybe uh, always but easy to understand and get that gives confidence it gives guidance it gives a roadmap it gives you sort of a mandate to uh, ask for budgets to invest maybe uh, extend your team and um having said that um correct me if i'm wrong but where i'm seeing um they do uh, be is when people start to uh, when journey maps and mapping is already sort of inside the organization people are doing it uh sort of uh ad hoc maybe or uh doing the best they can but there is no coordinated uh, center of expertise like everybody is doing it slightly differently it's hard to exchange uh journey maps because one is in powerpoint the other one is in excel and the other one is made in a different tool and um there is no like layer above that helps you with orchestration connection seeing what your colleagues do um and when you start to when you when you actually want to do this and when multiple people see hey department xyz is also doing something with journey maps let's connect and you need to find a, you need to find common ground both in language in tools in structures and processes and um i feel that they do is helping and playing a role there was does yeah I, yeah i totally agree and I, I see that as well before like okay you mentioned like PDF and Excel, a lot of work now is done in the whiteboard tools, right? Like a Miro, FigJam or, or a Mural. And that's great. That's where you need to start to, you know, get some stuff in place. But then you start to break down because there's like V1.6.2 or there's like 20 different boards where you have all these different information and versions and stakeholders and sessions and inputs. And it really gets messy. And that's the point when, when we see teams go into like a journey management solution like they do, because they need something to maintain this workflow that they're trying to create in tools that are not necessarily designed for that. So that is what we see. But before we try to take a stab at this, this was already a big problem. So it's not saying like, hey, this is this is only occurring now. A lot of teams are still struggling this. So our job is just to accelerate that and say like, hey, you're doing an amazing job. Here is the next step. And this is what you can do next. Have you considered going into, for instance, taking all these opportunities from your journeys, put them on a scatter plot and start to influence decision making in your organization? And it's like, hey, oh, okay, now I see how I can connect the dots between journeys that on like flat solution like a whiteboard wasn't obvious where I could collaborate, but not necessarily manage and have progress as a guiding principle. So I think that is definitely where we play and where we see a lot of organizations that are reaching that step now then ultimately go into, okay, good, journeys work for us. Now let's take it to, to the next level. Yeah, and I like what you say that it needs to help decision making. And I think that's the one of the biggest challenges with just a journey map that it it gives you insights and it, it sort of guides decisions, but it doesn't help you to connect across departments to, like you said, it, to, to really be a business tool. It Journey maps, unfortunately, are still very much a space for researchers, for designers, uh, and um, they should be like, it should get into the hands of financial controllers, 
uh, marketing people and um, they need different kinds of insights, different kinds of visualizations, different kinds of dashboards, uh, not just a journey overview. Yeah, that's right. And I, I can give you an example that um, I was not there when getting that feedback, but uh, our, our CXO Martin was working with Polestar, one of the uh, EV companies that is doing an amazing job and also like streamlining everything across teams with journeys. And they said like data is amazing in getting on that inside level and making sure that, you know, everything is visible and people start connecting the dots and we can work. But where you need to go next, and I think this is, this is the obvious one, is you want to be like managing the impacts of what we as service designers offer. So naturally we're following the service design path, right? From being like in the corner, making journey maps to like influencing decision-making across teams, helping the board of directors or the executives see what needs to be seen. That's where we're now. But the next step is actually like creating a dedicated practice around servicing customer insights and making decision-making across all these teams possible using the lens of journey. So I think that's a natural progression of where we'll go next. That's super interesting because you don't know that, uh, but the previous episode, 166, was about CX governance. And mm. I can totally see how that would also like merge into everything that they do is enabling. Like you need a governance structure, for instance, to... Um, do something with the insights, with the results, with, well, everything that comes out. Yeah. Is governance on your agenda? Like, do you hear people talking about that? <laughs> Depends on which organization <laughs> you're from. Like, yeah. <laughs> the word is pretty loaded, but you need it, right? I like to think of it as guidance. So you need to have top-down support, whether it's from your management, senior management, or even on the board. I mean, in, in five years from now, we'll look back into this episode, like, yeah, of course we have a chief journey officer, but... Today, that's not happening in organizations yet. So having the support from the top of your organization to say like, yes, customer experience, I mean, that's a no brainer for everyone to focus on the customer experience. I think we're past that station, but executing that and making sure that everything flows like a nested structure rather than to like being a fragmented structure. I think that's where you need that support where there needs to be like some sort of governance or at least like a room to explore or commitment from senior management to say like, this is what we're going to do. And that translates obviously into like playbooks, works of working, standard operating procedures I've seen in some organizations get developed depending on you know what type of business you are. That is absolutely necessary, but it doesn't say that it must be in place when you start. You can also create these artifacts that help senior leadership to say, okay, okay, I get it. I get what we need to do. Now I'm going to help you support this. That can also be a way of doing it. Mm. Yeah, let's uh, listen to this episode in five years' time and see how, where we are. Uh, I'm <clears throat> a voice in the back of my head was saying, uh, "Hold on, like maybe if I was listening to this episode <laughs> right now, something would be saying like, oh, there we go, another shiny new tool uh, uh, that I need to add to my stack. And uh, this is going to be the silver bullet. And oh yeah, surely. Uh, like when, <clears throat> when it isn't it the right time for people to adopt a tool like they do? Like when would you advise against signing up <laughs> Does that make, do you know do you understand yeah, what I yeah. mean like because it can oh, be it, definitely. it can be so tempting like oh man I don't know it looks good and it's new and uh, my manager always likes new things uh, and then it always ends up in failure and disappointment and what's the other word <laughs> fear I don't know so uh, when would you discourage somebody from actually stepping into Daydo? Yeah, it's a good question. And at the beginning, when we started this company, by the way, we never intended to create a product company, a platform. We were just doing consultation and we realized how hard it was to align around the journey after like the project was done and we moved to a next team or a different organization. So we created Daydo to serve our consultancy, to make our consultancy better. And then our customers said, can we have it? So with that insight, we're doing almost everything at Daydo and you know, it boils down to being user-centered or customer-centered, if you will. But helping people to find Daydo is something we invest in marketing, for instance. But it means that we don't get people that 
don't need us. We're not going to like venture into the big accounts of this world, say like, hey, have you heard of journey management? We should talk to you. Do you want it? It's not like dog fooding our solution. It's like, we are here. You can try the product. It's free. Does it give you value? Great. Then we can talk because we're a commercial organization. We would love to have your business, but only if you need it. And it breaks down or boils down to, again, like how much is your organization to support it? Because what I've seen I've seen some service designers who know every little detail about our practice and and are really good at influencing in organizations, but sometimes they're just a team of one. And then the rest of the organization is like process oriented or maybe like still figuring out with what agile actually means to them. So then it's a really hard sell and it's really hard to get it in place. And then you're better off with just having visual journeys to communicate and to make sure that people get ready for it. Um, So in that case, it's not like we say bye bye. You can still make journeys in Daedu, but I don't think this is a this is the right place for that organization. So I think that is a good way to to lead that in. And our teams do a great job in helping people understand like where are we as an organization? Can it succeed? And if we're going to start, do we need to start big, small, and then how big? So I think that's that's some work we do and guide people to to assess that. Of course, uh, everybody is welcome uh, to try it out, like you said. And even if you want to visualize a journey map, you can do that. But uh, what I'm hearing in your story is people who benefit the most will be people who want to mature to the next level, who need orchestration, coordination, and like connect journeys. Um, that doesn't exclude the other group, but um, I think that's that's where you sort of can add even more value. If there's momentum around journeys and customer journeys in your organization, that's the right time to dig in because you will need all the teams to collaborate. And whether you're a designer starting this up, there's probably some folks from CX that already can join and they speak the same language. There are some people from product management who probably say like, ah, yeah, of course, we need to do this and I want to be part of this. And then you get this snowball ro- rolling. So that's that's the typical constellation we see. Sometimes it's 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 more marketing related, but really like if there's designers, specifically service designers involved and your organization has some momentum around loading the customer journeys or thinking about them, that's a good place to start thinking about a solution to actually get it to the next level. Yeah, and um, also, what I've seen is once journey maps and just the journey, once that idea starts to take ground inside an organization, it can scale really quickly and you might get in trouble if you start using uh, or if you don't have a strategy for migrate to a solution or a tool that helps you to scale as well, because you won't be able to get, I don't know, a hundred colleagues to work together in Miro. So that's something to think about. You could start out with simple tools that get you up to speed quickly, but you have to have a strategy to scale. And and that's maybe something interesting to keep in mind. Um, being mindful of our time, uh, Johan, um, you mentioned something about understanding where you are uh, as an organization. Well, that's a, that's a very nice uh, leeway into the journey management index that uh, we sort of uh, brainstormed together and thought that could be useful for the community. Uh, would you like to give your perspective on what the journey management index is and what we try to achieve with that? Or should I give a heads up? Uh, let me take a stab at it and you can uh, use your magic words to elaborate further. What we want to do is this is an ongoing conversation in companies. So even if you get like, okay, this is journey management, I can see how this can play out in my organization. You still need to get everyone on board or the others that are thinking about it, but haven't maybe articulated well what to do with it. So the goal here is really like create an index, an objective index, say like how mature is our organization and all these different levels, like in terms of governance or guidance, if you will, in terms of goals, KPIs, ways of working, ownership, all these different aspects of journey management. How far are we ready to support us as an organization and by indexing it we can actually create a benchmark to say like this is where we are and this is where we want to be so what are the steps to to get there and we can say this is it (laughs) and slap it onto the world and say use it or and that's i think the better way and why we're why we're here let's create it together i mean using the right words using the right steps 
if we have a guide or a way to think about this and to put in front of our stakeholders and bring up to the senior management in our organization, say, this is what we're going to do. Here's where we're strong and this is where we're not strong. So therefore, we're going to invest into this. Then we have an objective discussion or at least an objective framing of the discussion that can help our organizations tremendously in making a next step. So I think that is what we want to achieve with defining a journey management index. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you have anything <laughs> to add to that or yeah, no. you would phrase it simpler. <laughs> you, you, you touched upon uh, really good things. Um, uh, creating a conversation piece that helps you to have the conversation inside your organization uh, about this is, I think, what the outcome will be and what will be helpful. Um, and as you said, we don't have all the answers yet. Where this is uh, in true service design, fashion, a prototype. I wouldn't say it's a version 1.0, but let's say it's a version 0.6 or 0.7. Um, I, uh, I sort of added the, the mark minimal viable index or minimal viable survey. We want to start out really uh, simply and build and grow this together with the community, engage uh, the community, and also hopefully better understand what are the challenges when people want to move from level two to three or three to four and uh, see if there are things we can do to support that throughout the year. And like you said, benchmarking is super interesting just to get an objective idea. Where do we stand compared to our peers in the same industry or in the same country or the same company scale? So. Um, we're going to put it out there. Uh, I'll make sure to add all the links, but right now uh, you can find the index already at servicedesignshow.com slash index. That will be the URL where you can uh, take the survey and benchmark yourself. And um, yeah, from my perspective, uh, I want to I wanna have this conversation with the community and see how we can make this into a very valuable tool to take, like you said, journey mapping to journey management. I love that. What, what I really like about this, and we've seen this play out already, is that you have certain challenges in, let's say, stage two of developing your maturity and another has overcome them. So learning from your peers is way better than having someone to go in and, and do the work for you. So if we are able to facilitate these conversations, make meaningful connections, then I think we're we're doing a fantastic job. So. That is really the goal here to make it together rather than to say, mm, this is probably it. And you have a little tool to use, but if you can also make some meaningful connections that you haven't had before, that would be fantastic. That would be awesome. And like you said, it would be so interesting to connect people who are in the similar maturity stage and see which challenges they have in common or maybe how they have overcome them. Like already so many ideas what we can do uh, together and with the community this year. Um, Johan, we are heading uh, towards the end of this conversation. One of the classic questions I have at the end is, what do you hope is the one thing from all the things we've discussed, somebody will at least take away? That there is an actual shot at becoming a journey led organization. It's not like talks anymore. You can do it and there is a way and it's going to be hard, but there is a way and there is a path towards success. And we're here to help you join us for the ride. It's going to be fun, exciting and <laughs> probably very bumpy, but nevertheless, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Johan, uh, this sort of wraps up our initial uh, conversation, our public uh, announcement of our partnership. Uh, really excited uh, to have you on board, really grateful and thankful for your confidence in uh, in the service design show and uh, sticking your neck out to help this service design community uh, mature. My pleasure. It's so much fun. So let's do more. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. If you want to assess your journey management capabilities or benchmark yourself against your colleagues and competitors, take a look at the Journey Management Index, which you can find at servicedesignshow.com slash index, or just click the link in the show notes of this episode. This Journey Management Index is the first initiative to emerge from the partnership between Teidu and the Service Design Show. And I really hope it's going to benefit you and the entire service design community. My name is Mark Fontaine and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Service Design Show and I'm really looking forward to see you in the next video.